Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Showcase video. Today we've got a really fun team built around Wigglytuff and some unique strategies to make it shine. We're running an Assault Vest Wigglytuff with the competitive ability using Sticky Webs to raise its special attack and turn it into a special attacking beast. But that's just the start. We've also got a Choice Scarf Malamar with Switcheroo to mess with our opponent's items and its contrary ability makes it faster when the webs are up. Leading the charge, we've got Galvantula to set up Sticky Webs and then Cinderace comes in to court change those webs onto our side so Wigglytuff and Malamar can really take advantage. Rounding out the team, Corviknight serves as a reliable special wall and we've got Sinister as a Calm Mind Sweeper on the physically defensive side. In our first battle, we're against Turtle Owner from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. If you want to battle me or send me teams, be sure to join the Discord. Link is in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more team showcases and battles. Let's see how this Wigglytuff team performs. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Turtle Owner. So they're going to lead off with Parasite the Recluse, which is, of course, the Electros, as I led off with my Galvantula. Now, this could be the Zoroark. We have to keep that in mind. So I want to get my Sticky Webs up, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, I don't need to think about that too much. We do have speed, so that tells me they're not the Zoroark. I'm pretty sure Zoroark outspeeds Galvantula. Could be wrong there. Um, they go for a Flamethrower. Again, this could still be the Electros. And looking at the damage output, I'd say it is the Electro. So we'll go for a Volt Switch, potentially break an Illusion, but I think it's more likely that we're not going to break an Illusion. I think that is the Electro, to be honest with you. So we'll go for a Volt Switch. Yeah, no damage. That's definitely an Assault Vest and Electro as well. And um, it wouldn't take it that well if it wasn't Assault Vest. So that's, that's, that's good to know. So now, if we assume we can just go into our Cinderace here, because we're going to go for a Flamethrower, and then we can Court Change. So we'll go into Cinderace now. Striker comes on in. There we go. Nicely done. They go for another flamethrower. That's going to do diddly squat to my Cinderace. Can't burn us either. We go for a court change. Get those sticky webs on our side of the field. It's going to be really beneficial for us. And they withdraw their uh, Electros. And they go into Cuban Cigar. Which is going to be the Torkoal. They probably want to go for a Rapid Spin to get rid of those sticky webs right now. But little do they know. I'm actually going to exchange them. So they get the Drought up, which is going to benefit the Victory Bell. The um, Hisuian Arcanine and the Roaring Moon. We change to a normal type though. We're going to go for a Court Change. Get them Sticky Webs on our side of the field. And now we're looking pretty good. So if we assume they're going to go for a Stealth Rocks. We should go into Wigglytuff and fire off a big Hyper Voice at competitive range. I think that is the best thing to do here. Alright, so we withdraw our Cinderace. Um, I should have just U-turned really. I don't know why I hard switched there. But either way, Wigglytuff comes in which is fantastic. We get caught in the Sticky Webs. And uh, we also get a competitive boost, which is fantastic. So Wigglytuff coming through with the plus two Hyper Voices. They go for a Lava Plume in the Sun. Does not much damage. No burn, which is nice. Looking at their squad, I would say our best bet is just go straight for a Hyper Voice. It's going to hit everything except from the uh, Hisuian Zoroark pretty hard. And the Hisuian Zoroark cannot touch us, really, thanks to the Assault Vest. So they have to stay in and take this, which take this they do not as the Torkoal goes down. Wigglytuff claims a soul. No rapid spinning. Boom. All right, Rock Boy comes in. That's going to be the Hisuian Arcanine. Now, I can't really take a hit from this thing. They could just go for a flare that's in the sun, so I can't Terra Steel. Going to have to stack off good old Galvantula here, I think. So we'll go into the Galvantula. We'll sack it off. They could be Choice Scarf, so we have to be careful of that. So we'll go into the Widow now. And um, see what they're going to do. We get caught in the Sticky Webs, of course. Um, not that it matters, because they go for a Flare Blitz, which is, of course, going to take us out. So, down goes the Galvantula. No recoil, of course, because it has that pesky Rockhead ability. But, we're in a much better position now, because what we can do, what we can do, is we can just go into Cinderace, and we can scare this thing out. So, um, with a high jump kick. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, do I do that? Do I do that? Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Malamar. Now, Malamar's got a Choice Scarf. And if they're Choice Scarf, they would outspeed normally. But because of our contrary ability, we're able to get a speed boost from the Sticky Webs. Meaning we can go for a superpower here, which will boost our defenses, meaning we can take a Flare Blitz, which would be amazing. They go for an Extreme Speed, which is going to do a nice chunk of damage to us. But that confirms... Oh, they are Life Orb. I already saw Life Orb, didn't I? Uh, we go for a superpower, though. That does take out the Arcanine in one clean hit, which is fantastic. A critical hit of that. And you know what? We take those. We definitely take those. However, they don't know that we're Choice Scarf necessarily because we have the Sticky Web. So why would we be Choice Scarf? Now, I'm Choice Scarf so I can trick things. So they might not bring in the Zoroark. They don't bring the Zoroark. They bring in the Roaring Moon. And for that reason and that reason only, 
I'm fully expecting a Terra flying here, which would be deadly to us, potentially. Um, but you know what? It's fine. We do have the Corviknight in the back, so I'm going to go into Corviknight now. I'm fully expecting them to go for a Terra flying here. All right, they're going to withdraw Malamar. Well, I'm going to withdraw Malamar. Um, we'll bring it in later, and we're going to go into Noctis just to see if this thing Terra's here. Because if they Terra, they, they, they don't Terra. They go for a U-turn. They go for a U-turn. Which gives them some Rocky Helmet chip. And now this gives them a free switch into Victory Bell with a Weather Ball. Or Hisui and Zoroark with a Flamethrower potentially. Electros is also a really good switch here. And we are fully specially defensive. So I know we can take things. So they go into Electros. This could not. This might be the Zoroark. But he's already taken a bit of damage. So we know it's the real Electros. Which is good to know. Now I'm going to go for a U-turn. Because I know for a fact we can take a Thunderbolt. But they actually don't outspeed us anyway. Oh that makes sense. Because actually Electros is a lot slower than I thought it was. Um, I thought I knew it was slow, but I didn't, I didn't think it was that slow. But anyway, we assume they're going to go for a flamethrower to take advantage of the sun. We should go into our Cinderace. And I believe the sun wears off this turn. I have, I, I, I lost count. And um, they go for a discharge though, which is going to sting a little bit. Might even paralyze us. It does paralyze us, but we do still outspeed the Electros. So I'm not too 100% worried about that. The sun is actually still up, so we can go for a big Pyro Ball right now. And do some serious damage to this Electro, Ele Electros in the sun. Takes out the Electros cleanly, which is amazing. Um, Electros is just that slow that even a paralyzed Cinderace outspeeds it. And there goes the Sunlight, getting rid of the Protosynthesis on the Roaring Moon, making the Victory Bell pretty much useless. And the Zoroark is, um, could potentially wreck us a bit. So they go into the Roaring Moon once again. We know this thing lost some HP, and there it is. The, the HP is gone. Um, so we know that this thing is going to go. Um, so, right, basically, I, I don't need. Cinderace necessarily anymore. I'm going to go for a U-turn just in case they Dragon Dance, but they don't. They go for a knockoff, which takes us out, which is absolutely fine. Cinderace going down there is not the end of the world. I could have used a Sucker Punch for the Zoroark, but chances are they're not going to Terra this thing. They're probably going to Terra the Zoroark. So um, that is something to be wary of. Now, and now, now this is the problem we've got. Do we go into Wigglytuff? Or do we do, go, do we go Corviknight? I kind of want to go Corviknight and just go for a U-turn. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because then we can, what we can do is if we U-turn here, then we can just get some chip damage off on them. And then I'll be pretty confident that Malamar's superpower will KO. So they do withdraw the Roaring Moon. What are they going to go into, though? That is the real question. Victory Bell? Bioengineer. That's going to be the Victory Bell, right? Is it the Victory Bell, though? We'll find out in a second because we went for U-turn. Bit of chip. Not very effective, proving it is the Zoroark, of course. Nice and shiny as well. Got to love it. Look at that beauty. Um, it comes back to us, of course, and then we're going to go for a switch here. So uh, I want to go Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff seems like the most sensible thing to do. So we're going to Yumta. We're flying, of course, because we Corviknight's the one that switched out. I love that I know how that mechanic works now. Um, we get the competitive boost, of course. Wigglytuff's about to get another KO, I think. So we go for a Dazzling Gleam here because obviously Hyper Voice doesn't affect. They could Terra, but they're more than likely going to Terra Fairy if they Terra. So they go for their own Hyper Voice, and we, uh, we are going to eat that up. Dazzling Gleam comes through, however, and that should KO, and it does KO the Zoroark. We got two KOs of Wigglytuff in this game, which is absolutely amazing. Wigglytuff is, like, probably one of the most useless mods ever until today. Okay, Bioengineer comes in, which is the real Victory Bell. Now, this thing is pretty scary right now. I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice, just in case. All right, they go for a Poison Jab, which is going to take out the Wigglytuff, which is fine. I don't mind that too much. And um, what I do mind is the fact that this thing is um, kind of wrecking us. So I'm going to go into Corviknight. I think Corviknight's a really good answer to this. So uh, we'll go Corviknight now. And we'll just go for a Brave Bird. I don't see any reason not to go for a Brave Bird. It'll hurt the Roaring Moon as well, which would be great. They do withdraw. They're going to go into the Roaring Moon straight up to take a Brave Bird to the face. Makes a lot of sense. So Roaring Moon comes in. Nice and shiny, of course. Gotta love it. We go for a Brave Bird. That's gonna do a bit of damage. To, well, nice bit of damage to the Roaring Moon. Recoil is obviously a thing, but it's fine. We go for a U-turn this turn, and then we just go into Malamar. All right, they go for an Outrage, which is gonna give them some Rocky Helmet chip at the end of the day. Um, but it also means that we'll be able to take them out of a Brave Bird. Uh, U-turn, sorry. So U-turn takes out the Roaring Moon. Now it's good to know they haven't Terraged yet. That's that's good to note. So uh, Corviknight, come on back. You've done a good job. Have they terrored? They didn't terror, did they? We now go into Malamar. Malamar's going to get a nice speed boost on top of it. It's floating in the air, of course, thanks to the Corviknight once again. 
And then we get a speed boost from the sticky webs. All right, Bioengineer, the real Bioengineer comes in once again. Obviously, the Zoroark's fainted, so it's obviously the real one. Um, we just go for a Psycho Cut here. I don't see any reason not to. Boom, boom, boom. Nearly down goes the Victory Bell as they do reveal they are a Focus Sash set, which is very interesting. So they go for a Power Whip, which is going to take out Squidward over here. But you know what? It's fine. That's a pretty cool strat right there with the Focus Sash. Definitely, it guarantees a hit uh, of some kind. So that's pretty awesome. So let's go into Sinister now. And Sinister, you can just go for a Shadow Ball pretty much. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We get caught in the Sticky Webs. It's fine. We're not relying on speed here. We're just going to go for a Shadow Ball and take this thing out right now. Because even if they go for a Strength Sap, which they won't do, they go for a Knock Off. That's going to sting a little bit. But you know what? It's fine. Sinister is able to finish this Victory Bell off. As there we go. Down goes the Victory Bell. And there ends the game. So GG Turtle Owner. That was a fun one. So glad the Sticky Webs trap managed to, we managed to pull off for this game. Absolutely amazing stuff. GG Turtle Owner. The next battle is against Dadka, a randomer that I met online, and they have a full evolution team barring the Alolan Ninetales, which is obviously there for screen support and setting up snow for that Glaceon. Let's see how it goes. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Dadka. So they're going to lead off with nine tails, which is to be expected as I led off with my Galvantula. So Galvantula's a good lead here because obviously we can get up a Sticky Webs. Now I'm hoping we see an Espeon switch here to Magic Bounce the Sticky Webs back. That'd be awesome because it saves us having to Court Change later. But you know what? Let's go for the Sticky Webs anyway. They do go for a Blizzard straight up, which is going to do a lot of damage to us, but it won't freeze us luckily. The snow looks really good in this stadium. Like snow looks so nice in the stadium. Anyway that out of the way and um, we do have a switch in of course to this being the um weekly tough so i'm gonna go into the weekly tough right now and uh we can go over a fire blast which will do a little bit of damage to the nine tails depending on whether they get the aurora veil up or not but wiggly tough comes in they go for another blizzard of course it's gonna sting a little bit not too much um, and we just go for a Fire Blast here because it should hurt everything on the team except from the Vaporeon pretty well. They go for another Blizzard though. They're just going to spam Blizzard. That's fair enough. Are they going to get a Freeze? No Freeze. Fire Blast comes through. That's going to do a nice chunk of damage. Nearly takes them out in fact, which is fantastic as we go for another Hyper Voice. Um, they go for an Aurora Bell this turn. So Hyper Voice may not KO here, but it's absolutely fine if it doesn't. Um, so we go for a Hyper Voice. There we go. Takes out the Nine Tails just like that, which is fantastic. So... Uh, now we can probably expect a Espeon switch or a Glaceon switch to spam Blizzard again. All right, Glaceon does come in, which is fine. And um, they get caught in the sticky webs, which is great. And then all we need to do is go for a Fire Blast, really. We can definitely take a Blizzard. Um, or do we want to go into a uh, Court Change Cinderace? I think we go into Court Change Cinderace here. So we'll switch into Cinderace now because I know we can take a Blizzard, no problem. And as long as we don't get frozen, we should be fine. So Striker comes in. They do go for a Blizzard, which is going to sting a little bit. Nothing too drastic. No Freeze, which is nice. We have to go for a Court Change here to get the Light Screen and Reflect and the Sticky Webs all on our side, which would be really nice. Court Change comes through, changing us into a Normal type, so we no longer resist the Blizzard, which is unfortunate. However, however, it's not the end of the world because we got the Light Screen and Reflect on our side. So Blizzard comes through, it doesn't KO us thanks to the Aurora Veil. And then we simply go for a Pyro Ball here and just, like, get some damage off on the Glaceon. So there we go. Nice half damage thanks to the Snow boosting its defenses. Blizzard comes through and that's going to take out Cinderace. So that's absolutely fine by me. Now, does the Snow wear off this turn? I think it does, right? Um, either way, I'm pretty confident we can just go for a Wigglytuff switch here. So I'm going to go Wigglytuff now. Yumta comes in. Like so. We get caught in the sticky webs, which is great. Means we're going to get that competitive boost real quick. So Wigglytuff's coming through for us right now. And uh, we go for a Hyper Voice here because it should take them out. They go for a Blizzard, but it's not going to do much damage to us with the um, Aurora Veil up. And Hyper Voice does cleanly take out the Glaceon, which is fantastic. So two KOs for Wigglytuff. Ninetales and Glaceon both went down and the Snow does stop. So um, the Aurora Veil stops as well, which is unfortunate. All right, Espeon's going to come in. Probably going to get hit by a Psy Shock here. But you know what? It's fine. We're not really doing much with this anymore. So let's go for a Hyper Voice just in case. They go for a Psy Kick, which we might actually be able to take. We don't take, though. That's unfortunate, but it's whatever. Uh, Wigglytuff goes down after taking out two of their Mons, so I, you'd love to see it. Uh, now we just go into our Malamar, I think. So we'll go Malamar now. Good old Squidward. There we go. 
We get caught in the sticky webs, which is unfortunate. Now, we're probably going to see a switch here. Because they know we've got a speed boost. With, they know a knockoff's coming. So let's go for a switcheroo. They do withdraw the Espeon. Now, are they going to go Umbreon here? I think Umbreon would make sense. Yeah, Umbreon comes in. That's fine. Umbreon is here. Looking amazing. I love Umbreon. We go for a switcheroo. And that's going to give them the choice scarf. Whilst we retain our nice and powerful um, lump of light clay, apparently. So... Uh, let's go for a superpower. Superpower comes through. We do obviously outspeed thanks to the speed boost. It takes a nice chunk of damage out of the Umbreon with superpower and it boosts our attack and defense in the process, which is fantastic. So they go for a foul play, but thanks to our boosted defense, it's not going to do as much damage as it would do. We go for another superpower here every single time, and that should take out the Umbreon from there as it does, which is fantastic, giving us another defense and attack boost, which is amazing. Malamar is about to sweep, ladies and gentlemen. What an absolute legend. Gotta love it. Okay, Vaporeon comes in, which is fine. Nice and powerful. We go for a knockoff here. Knockoff comes through. That's going to do a lot of damage. There we go. Nice clean amount of damage. We knock off the leftovers. They go for a scold. It's going to sting, but will it burn? That's the real question. No, it does not. We always go for a superpower here. It should do more damage than knockoff now. Now they've got no item. As down goes the Vaporeon, which is fantastic. Absolutely amazing stuff from Malamar. What a team player. You're gonna love it. All right, in comes Espeon. So Espeon's the final Pokemon of choices here. Sylveon's right there, but they choose to go into this thing. Let's go for a knockoff real quick. Take out the Espeon with one clean hit. There we go. Not even focus Sash or anything. Espeon goes down. And now it's just Sylveon that we need to worry about. Now, Sylveon can take a hit from us because our best move to hit Sylveon is going to be Psycho Cut, right? So Sylveon comes in. They may Terra here. They also may forfeit, but let's go for a Psycho Cut first and foremost. Let's see what they do. Psycho Cut comes through. Doesn't do the job. They go for a Hyper Voice. Malamar goes down. So the Sylveon's got a chance of making a little bit of a comeback here as Malamar is finally put in its place and taken down by the Hyper Voice, which is fantastic. So uh, best bet, probably going to be Corviknight. Galvantula could also do some work. Um, Sinister is also a potential opportunity. I think we go Corviknight because looking at the damage that that Psycho Cut did, I think we can scare them out. But no, they, they can't switch out. They're on the last Pokemon, Jack. Ignore me. Let's go for a Brave Bird. Brave Bird comes through. It should do a chunk of damage to the Sylveon. There we go. Are they going to go for a Wish? They've got the Berry, which is going to boost. Well, it's going to restore the health. Citrus Berry. Or a Guav Berry, sorry. And they go for a Substitute. Interesting stuff. So, Substitute Hyper Voice. Probably Calm Mind. Let's break that Substitute real quick. All right. Sylveon's going to break out. It's going to go for a Terrestrialization right now. What type are we going to see, though? That's the real question. What type will we see? Fire. Ooh, very interesting. So, Substitute Hyper Voice. Probably Terror Blast and Calm Mind, if I had to guess. Luckily, we outspeed, so we're going to be able to break out this substitute, so that's great. So, Sylveon substitute is going to go down here. It should do anyway, based on the damage we did to it earlier. Substitute fades. Looking great. And they probably go for a Terra Blast, which won't actually KO us because we're specially defensive AF. So, Terra Blast comes through. That is going to do a, probably about half to us. Yeah, about half our remaining HP. That's, that's great. So, we go for another Brave Bird here, and we finish the game with Corviknight. That's... Pretty fun game, to be fair. It was a short but sweet one, but pretty fun one regardless. So, GG Daika, that was a pretty fun one. Then we have someone whose name I can't pronounce, and they've got an interesting starter team. Let's see how this one turns out. I'm looking forward to a good battle with this one. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent. So, they're going to lead off with the Superior, as I led off with my uh, Cinderace. Cinderace does pretty well. I, I figured they might lead with Miascarada, personally, but uh, Cinderace works just as well. And we can go for that nice and powerful U-turn, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because they will withdraw as they do withdraw, probably into the Swampert or the Quackable. So let's see what they actually bring in here. Not the Quackable, it's definitely the Swampert, because Quackable can only be caught in a Pokeball. So, we turn into a Bug-type and we hit it with a big U-turn, which is going to do about a quarter of its HP, which is fantastic. A um, bit of chip, you can't go wrong with a bit of chip. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Galvantula, scare this thing out of an Energy Ball. Um, and go for a Sticky Webs. Now, the Sticky Webs aren't going to stay on their side of the field for too long because our game plan is to transfer them over to our side so we get that competitive boost and the Malamar boost as well. Um, so let's go for a Sticky Web now. Um, they do stay in, which is interesting. So that, that's, that's very interesting that they stayed in. Um, to go for a Flip Turn, maybe? They go for a Knock Off. Interesting. So Knock Off's not even going to do half. Widow's kind of taking hits like a champ. 
And then we'll just go for an energy ball here. I don't see any reason not to. So energy ball comes through. That should be a dead Swampert. It is a dead Swampert. So Swampert goes down. It's weird seeing a ground type go down to a bug, bug uh, electric type. That's for sure. So let's see what they do now. Okay, what are they bringing in now? That's going to be the Blaziken. Gets caught in the sticky webs, which is fantastic. Which means even if they have protect and they go for a speed boost here, and uh, we can always Volt Switch here. So I'm going to go for Volt Switch. They don't protect. They just stay in and take it like a champ. Does nearly half, which is fantastic. Galvantula, come on back. And uh, we'll go into our... Hmm. I'm guessing Malamar would be a good switch here because... Yeah, I think Malamar is a decent switch. Um, I do want to go Malamar, but they're going to attack us. So we have to be really careful what we do here. So I'm leaning more towards them going for a fire type move. So I want to go into my Cinderace. Seems like the most optimal thing to do. So we'll go into Striker. Like so. They go for a Swords Dance, which is terrifying. I will say that it's terrifying. However... They're only at neutral speed now after the speed boost. So we still outspeed them. So that's great. So um, what we can do here is we can go for that court change. I think that's going to be really beneficial to us. Court change comes through. It changes into a normal type. So we're probably going to die to a close combat here. But it's not the end of the world. Cinderace has done its job, um, which is to set up the court change on the sticky web. So they actually go for a reversal, which isn't... It is going to KO us. That's fine. So Cinderace goes down to reversal. Uh, not even a full power reversal, which is crazy. Um, and they get another speed boost, making them plus one. Now, this is great for us because Malamar can now come in. And because Malamar has the Choice Scarf and and gets the speed boost from the Sticky Webs, we can go for a Psycho Cut, and that should take out the Blaziken. I don't think they will see this coming. I think they're probably going to go for the attack. So let's go for a Psycho Cut now. Um, yep, they didn't see it coming. A Psycho Cut takes out the Blaziken, which is fantastic. Malamar getting a KO is awesome. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So Blaziken is down. But they have their own contrary mon that we have to worry about, which is the Leaf Storm spamming Superior, which may come in now, but I think it's more likely going to be the Meowth So they go into, which I'm assuming is Meowth No, it's the Superior again. Interesting. So now, if we assume they're going to go for a, um, a Leaf Storm, we should go into Wigglytuff. I think Wigglytuff's a fine choice here. So we'll go Wigglytuff now. And um, we'll get that nice competitive boost from the Sticky Webs. We've also got the Assault Vest with max special defense. Um, so we should be able to tank two Leaf Storms from this thing, no problem. And we get that competitive boost, of course, like I said before. They now go for a Leaf Storm, which is going to do a roughly, oh, about a quarter of our HP. Which is unfortunate. They do get a special attack boost, but we should be all right as long as we go for a Fire Blast here and we connect. So they go for another Leaf Storm. Doesn't quite take us out thanks to that Assault Vest. And as long as we don't miss the Fire Blast, which we don't, this should KO the S Superior right now. It does KO the Superior, which is fantastic. Down goes the superior to the Wigglytuff, which is awesome. And looking at the remaining members of their team, Quackable and Meowstrad, they're probably going to see a Quackable switch here, which is fine. So Quackable's going to come in. Yep. They're going to want to finish our Wigglytuff off to get that Moxie boost. Now, I'm not going to let them do it. So they're going to go for an Aqua Step here. Um, they could be Terror Electric for all I know. I think my best bet is to go into Sinister. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. As um, we do switch out, of course, Sinister can come in now. We're looking all right here. Tea time comes in. There we go. Gets caught in the sticky webs, which is really unfortunate, but it is what it is. No problems there. They go for the aqua step to get their speed boost. Now, they're going to be inclined not to go for another aqua step here, so they're not going to get another speed boost. If anything, they go for like a bulk up or an ice spinner or something along those lines. Um, so let's see how this plays out. We're going to get some leftovers recovery, which basically nullifies most of the damage that aqua step gave to us. Um, and now we just go for a match of gotcha. There's no real reason not to because it could burn the Masquerada as well. They go for the Ice Spinner though, which is going to do a lot of health. Um, they are Life Orb, of course, so it's going to whittle away at them. We go for a match of gotcha. There we go. Boom. That cleanly takes out the Quackable in one clean hit with a critical hit. Oh, I don't know whether that mattered or not. I don't know whether that mattered or not. But whatever way, we get some health back. And we might see a DC, to be fair. So the Quackable goes down, but now they can go into Meowth and they can definitely finish us off with a knockoff. But we'll just go into Corviknight to take said hit. All right, in comes Meowth Yeah, Meowth comes in, which is awesome. Um, I don't want this Sinister to go down because it could be useful against the Blastoise. Uh, so I am going to just switch out into my uh, Corviknight real quick. Maybe I should have just sacked off Wigglytuff there. You know what, it's fine, it's whatever. So we're going to Noctis. The Corviknight. They go for a knockoff. Which is going to turn them into a dark type. But it's going to knock off our Rocky Helmet. Now that was a crit and a half. But also, because it was a crit, if you take away 0.5% of the damage, 
He still did a lot, which tells me they might be choice banded. So I'm going to go for a U-turn just in case. But they do, of course, finish us off with a knockoff, which is absolutely fine. So uh, Noctis does go down. But again, it's fine. Um, because what we can do now is we can just go into our Malamar. Now, Malamar is in a very good position here. So we can go Malamar. We can start setting up so, uh, superpowers. So let's go Squidward. Like so. Now floating in the air because Corviknight was out before it. And uh, we just go for the Terra Fairy superpower real quick. So um, we go for the Terra. There we go. Terra Fairy coming through. Like so. And we should outspeed the Meowth Scarlet because A with Choice Scarf, B with, with Contrary Speed Up from Sticky Webs. Malamar looks really, really cool with that hat on though, to be fair. <laughs> it looks really cool. Um, so we go for a superpower. It should take them out. Does take them out nicely and gives us a nice attack and defense boost. Uh, which is going to be very useful, especially if that Blastoise is for some reason physical. Which I doubt it would be, given that the Quackable was on the team. Okay, in comes the Blastoise, which is the last remaining Pokemon. Let's see how this thing handles our Malamar. So, uh, we'll go for a Superpower real quick. If they go for a Shell Smash, we should still outspeed, I believe. Superpower comes through. It's going to boost our attack and defenses once again. They took like that like an absolute champ, though. So, they might not be Shell Smash. They might be defensive. Um, they go for an Iron Defense, which is very problematic for us. So... Uh, Iron Defense is very problematic. Now then, we do have the Galvantula still, which we can use to attack this, and the Sinister. So I'm not too worried. Uh, I'm just going to keep spamming superpowers pretty much because they have no recovery. So I may as well just do this and spam superpowers. Malamar is looking pretty good right now. That's for sure. And uh, they go for a Body Press, which is going to do Diddly Squat to us being a defensive and also, um, you know, fairy type and all that. The battle was cancelled. They forfeit. We get a big W with the Malamar making them forfeit. Absolutely awesome stuff. Then we have a battle versus Jojo Dude Man from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord. Once again, you should join that Discord server. There is a link in the description down below. And they've got a really cool Sun team. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, Jojo Dude Man. So they're going to lead off with Farfingers. The Grafaya as I led off with my Galvantula. So they might taunt us here. It's a possibility that they taunt us here. Um, I do want to get the Sticky Webs up. Uh, I'm going to go for the Sticky Webs right now. They do taunt us. That's fine. At least we know they're going to taunt us. So we can just Volt Switch now, which is fine. And um, they do not have a Ground type. So we can freely Volt Switch, which is fantastic. And we'll get Galvantula in later for a Sticky Web. So we'll go for a Volt Switch now. All right. They go for a Parting Shot. That's fine. We're going to get a nice um, slower Volt Switch on whatever they decide to bring in here, which I'm assuming is going to be the Torkoal um, or the Venusaur, one of the two. So let's see what they do here. All right, they're going to go into Cleven. I can't say that. The uh, Cleavor. And we go for a Volt Switch, which is fantastic. That's an Alpha Cleavor if I've ever seen one. Look at the size of that thing. It's massive. Um, anyway, we get Galvantra out of there. It does a nice chunk of damage to them, which is great. Um, so now I'm leaning towards Corviknight. I am going to go Corviknight now. I really think Corviknight is the way to go. So we'll bring Corviknight in like so. And then what we'll do is we'll just Brave Bird this thing. There's no real reason not to Brave Bird this thing. Brave Bird hurts everything on the team except from the uh, Corviknight themselves. So we should be all right here. They do withdraw. Are they going to go Corviknight as expected? They do, in fact, go into Domain Expansion, which is going to be the Torkoal. Interesting. So Domain Expansion's Drought comes into play. We go for a Brave Bird. It's just a bit of chip damage on the Torkoal. Nothing too drastic. Uh, as we get damaged by the recoil. So now we can assume they're going to go for a Lava Plume or a Stealth Rock. So let's go for a U-turn real quick. All right, they do withdraw the Torkoal as I went for a U-turn. So that's great. And they're going to go to Inuyasha, which is going to be the Blaziken. Good play, I would say. So we go for a U-turn here. We get a bit, of, a bit of initiative on whatever they brought in, which was the Blaziken. Um, so what can we do against this thing? Now, I am leaning towards good old uh, Malamar with the Choice Scarf here. Psycho Cut and all that. I think that's my best bet. So I'm going to go into Malamar right now. It's our best bet to take out this Blaziken. So we'll go Malamar like so. Floating because of the Corviknight before it. And we'll go for a Psycho Cut. I'm hoping they don't have Protect, but they might have Protect. All right, they're actually going to Terrastalize their Blaziken. What type are they going to go into, though? Hopefully not Steel. But we're going to see a Fire Terror Blaziken. So it's going to get some serious power in the sunlight right now. This Flare Blitz that's coming our way is going to sting quite a bit. So we go for a Psycho Cut. It does a bit of damage. Nothing too drastic. They go for a Flare Blitz. And that is going to take out Malamar, unfortunately, for us. So uh, the Flare Blitz comes through. Malamar goes down. What can you do about that? Not a lot, really. So Squidward is out of there. But the Blaziken's going to suffer some considerable recoil damage, which it does, which is fantastic. 
So we've got a couple of options here. We could go into our Corviknight and Terra Dragon. They have got a speed boost though. That's the problem. Or we can just go Galvantula with its uh, Focus Ash intact. So let's go into Galvantula with Focus Ash intact. They didn't get a Stealth Rocks, did they? No, they didn't. I remember. So now we can go for a Volt Switch. If they go for Flare Blitz, the Recoil plus Volt Switch will take them out. Um, I also want to go for a Sticky Webs. I'll go for a Volt Switch first and foremost. Um, we actually outspeed them. So I'm guessing they have something else that they're going for here. Like, why did we outspeed them there? I'm very confused. Very, very confused. So I'm going to have to go into... I'm going to have to go into Cinderace. I'm afraid to take this uh, Flare Blitz. That might be coming our way. Let's see what they do. Knock off. So why did we outspeed them then with uh, Galvantula? That's the real question. I don't know. Um, either way, they've got a Shell Bell, which is going to give them some health back. And they get another speed boost, which is terrifying. So what we can do here is we can Sucker Punch. So I'm going to Sucker Punch right now. They withdraw. They do not want it to go down to a Sucker Punch. That's fair enough. And they're going to go into Clevenger's Mantle, the, uh, <laughs> the Cleavor, which is fine. We go for a Sucker Punch. It obviously fails. So we don't get the Libero, which is nice. Kind of. Um, now I have to switch out. I'm going to go into Corviknight real quick because I don't want my Cinderace to go down just yet to a potential Choice Scarf Cleavor. You know what I mean? Um, so we're going to knock this real quick. They more than likely go for a U-turn here expecting the switch. But they might just go for a Stone Axe. They do go for a Stone Axe, which does... Oh, it's half? That ain't fair. I know I'm a, I know I'm a special defensive Corviknight, but seriously, that is just unrealistic damage. So unrealistic. Uh, let's go for a Roost. And um, they go for another Stone Axe, which should take us out. Yeah, it will take us out. Oh, critical hit as well, and that's unfortunate. But at least we got the Rocky Helmet chip that we needed, um, which is fantastic. They are locked into Stone Edge potentially right now. We haven't seen them do anything else. So what I want to do is I, I need to get something in. So I need to get Sinister in here. Sinister can take care of this thing with a Macha Gotcha. That's for sure. So we'll go for a Macha Gotcha here. Just to kind of deal with this thing. And if they go into anything else, which they are doing, like Venusaur, for example, we can set up Calm Minds all over that thing's face. So they're going to go into Fart Fingers, which is going to be the uh, the uh, Grafii. We go for a Machi Gotcha. And naturally, it's going to do not much damage, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't do much damage, but it might burn them. It doesn't burn them. Gives us some health back, which is nice. And then Leftovers is going to finish off the remaining of our HP. The Sunlight has faded as well, which is really good for us. It means that Venusaur is no longer a threat. Um, well, obviously, they have a Torkoal in the back, but um, you know what I mean. You know what I'm trying to say. So anyway, we'll switch out into Wigglytuff because they're probably going to go for a taunt here to stop us from calm mining up. Um, so we'll go into Wigglytuff real quick. And uh, what we'll do is we'll Terra Steel. We'll Terra Steel on this thing's face because if they go over, oh, they go for a Toxic. Ooh, okay. Toxic's fine. Now, unfortunately, even Terra Stealing right now would not get rid of the poison, um, which is unfortunate how it doesn't work like that. But it is what it is. So uh, let's see what they do here. So let's go for a Hyper Voice. And hopefully they go for a Parting Shot. But they actually go for a Taunt, which is interesting. So Taunt comes through. But we just went for the attack on the Grafii. There's no reason not to go for the attack. So Hyper Voice comes through. Does a nice uh, over 50% to it, which is great. Toxic's going to start digging into us, which is unfortunate. Um, and we go for a Hyper Voice real quick once again. They go for a Sunny Day, which means the Grafii is going to die to this next Hyper Voice, which is fantastic. Hyper Voice comes through. And that is one dead Grafii real quick. So that's great. That thing being out of the way means we can sticky web with our Galvantula. Okay, Inuyasha comes in. That's the Blaziken, right? Yeah, Blaziken comes in. We do not want this thing setting up. So we have to go for a Hyper Voice here 100% of the time. Um, they might die to recoil on the Flare Blitz. They might just go for a close combat, which would make them not die. Um, they do go for a close combat, which does take us out, unfortunately. But I couldn't really risk switching out because if they Swords Danced, it would have been all over. So... Um, Wigglytuff come back. You are, did a great. And they're going to get a nice speed boost as well, which is unfortunate. So let's see how this plays out. I'm going to go into Sinistra here. And the reason being is that I want to A, bait a Flare Blitz by going for a Terra Poison here. And then go for a Calm Mind or a Strength Sap. So um, what I'm going to do here is I am going to go for a Strength Sap because they more than likely go for a knockoff. So we're going to terrestrialize our Sinister real quick. It looks like it could be a Sinister comeback, potentially, looking at the team. If we can get a few Calm Minds up, we'll be good. We're golden. So Poison type comes through. And they've got knockoff. They've got Flare Blitz. They've got Close Combat. And they've got Swords Dance, I want to say. So they go for a Flare Blitz, which isn't going to do too much damage to us. We are physically defensive with Heat Proof. It gets a crit, which takes them right down. And it burns us. 
So because of the recoil, we're not going to be able to get a strength sap off, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Down goes the Blaziken at least. That's one threat out of the way. Blaziken is a big threat, obviously. And there we go. Strength sap fails, which is unfortunate. All right. The broom comes in. That is the Venusaur. We got to go for a Shadow Ball here or something. Um, I want to go for a Strength Sap. I'm going to go for a Strength Sap just in case he set up a Growth. They actually just go straight for a Weather Ball, which is going to be a Fire type. And that's going to definitely take us out, unfortunately. So, uh, Sinister just go down there. But you know what? It's fine. Uh, I want to go for a Strength Sap just in case they went for a Growth. Luckily, they didn't go for no Growth, which is fantastic. Um, and they lose some HP, which proves their Life Orb, which is great to know. So, now... We'll go into uh, Cinderace. We are going to get some rocks damage. Now, the best thing I can do here is just go for a Sucker Punch. So, I'm going to go for a Sucker Punch real quick right now. We go for a Sucker Punch, turning us into a Dark type, of course. Whack them in the face with that. It does over half, which is great. They go for a Sludge Bomb, take out Cinderace, which is no problem whatsoever. Now, when does the sun run out? I think it's this turn, right? Unless the fire was holding a Heat Rock. Um, but I could be wrong. Either way, the Harsh Sunlight does fade, which is fantastic. Uh, we go Galvantula here all the time. So Galvantula comes in. Like so. We do get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is unfortunate. And then we go for a Bug Buzz or a Volt Switch. I'm leaning towards Bug Buzz. I'm going to go for a Bug Buzz. They might switch into Torkoal, but it's fine if they do. It's whatever. I think we've lost this game anyway, to be honest with you. But I'm going to try my best. They do withdraw. Are they going to go into the Torkoal? Probably. Moonin, which is going to be the Corviknight, right? Okay, Corviknight comes in. That's fine. Uh, we go for a Bug Buzz. That's going to do minimal damage to a Corviknight, of course. Um, but we go for a Vol Switch the next turn, at least, which will do a nice little chunk of damage. But we definitely get KO'd by a Brave Bird here. So Vol Switch comes through. Does a, a well over half, which is great damage. They go for a Brave Bird. That should take us out, right? We lived on a sliver of HP, which is fantastic. And then, just in case they switch out into something like the Venusaur or something. Um... No, we just go for a Volt Switch. Screw it. Um, Volt Switch takes out the Corviknight, which is fantastic. And now they get a free switch in with their Torkoal. Now, Torkoal is an interesting Pokemon here because it could definitely finish off my Galvantula, but I can't remember what health it was at. Wait, they haven't even brought it in. They brought in the Cleavor. So that thing is definitely Scarfed. Let's go for a Bug Buzz just in case it's not on the Bluffing. They are Scarfed, though, and they take us out of an Exorcist, and that is going to be the game. So GG, Jojo Nude, man. That was a pretty fun one. Um, I did enjoy that one, to be fair. But you know what? I got to post losses here and there, so, you know... A loss is what you're going to get right now. And finally, it wouldn't be a good showcase video if we didn't beat up some Uber Pokemon, right? So we're going against someone whose name I can't pronounce. And they have a very threatening Uber's team, barring Zapdos, which is still a really good Pokemon in its own respectable area. Let's see how it goes. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponent. So they lead off with Calyrex. <laughs> What's going on? And I let off with Galvantula because I figured Sticky Webs look pretty good here. So um, I may as well get them up. It'll slow down that Maridon, Karaidon, Zashian, Calyrex, Kyogre is Scarf. So I may as well get the Sticky Webs up right now. They go for an Astral Barrage, as you would expect from a Calyrex. To just spam Astral Barrage. And that obviously takes us down to our Sash. Poor Galvantula has to go through that again. Um, so now then we do hang on with a Voga Sash. We can go for a Sticky Webs, which is going to be great. And uh, what we will do is we'll try and keep Galvantula alive. And see if we can get the Sticky Webs up on their side again. What we'll do for now is we'll go into our Wigglytuff. And Wigglytuff takes the Astral Barrage being immune to it. And is also going to be able to take any Hilver hit from this thing as well. Thanks to the Assault there. So, um, Yumta comes in. They do go for a Draining Kiss to take us out. Which does no damage, of course. That would have taken out Galvantula, but not good old Wigglytuff. So, let's go for a Dazzling Gleam real quick. They do go for a Psy Shock, which is going to sting quite a bit. Might KO us. Doesn't KO us, which is nice. We go for a Dazzling Gleam. And that does a nice bit of damage to them as well. So if we know they're going to go for a Psyshock, Shock, we should go into Malamar now. Um, which is exactly what I'm going to do. They may go for a Draining Kiss. I've just realized they may go for a Draining Kiss to take us out. Um, but I'm hoping they don't. I'm hoping they think uh, I might not KO. So let's go for another Psyshock. Shock. Um, as they do go for another Psyshock, Shock. So Malamar gets a free switching, which is great. And since we're Choice Scarf, we should outspeed here. So let's go for a Knockoff. Um, they actually go for a Draining Kiss, which is going to do half to us. Restoring some of their HP. However, this no, it restores all of it. However, Knockoff should do a lot of damage. It does actually nearly KO them, which is fantastic. But they are focus sashed, unfortunately. So, knowing they're going to go for a Draining Kiss again, we should go into Cinderace. Uh, no, we should go into Corviknight. So, let's go Corviknight now. 
Um, this Calyrex has punched holes in my teams. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not feeling this game. I feel like we're going to lose. But it is what it is. So, Corviknight comes through. They go for a Draining Kiss, which is going to give them some Rocky Helmet Chip, which will take out the Calyrex um, even after their health boost. So, that's the Calyrex gone, I guess. So, Rocky Helmet takes out the Calyrex. We are weakened, but we haven't lost yet. So, Calyrex being out of the way is a big threat out of the way right there. Mariadon comes in. To be fair, that is probably the best play they could go for. They get caught in the sti sti uh, sticky webs. Skippy webs, I was about to say. And they get the electric terrain up, which is unfortunate. Now, this is the part where um, we have to sack something off. So I'm, I'm going to sack off Wigglytuff, unfortunately. Wigglytuff is my least valuable Pokemon with such little HP. It can't do anything to anything on their team. So um, we're going to Yumta real quick, just to let it go down to an Electro Drift. And um, they do go for the Electro Drift. Brilliant animation for a Pokemon move, I will say. Poom. Look at that. Down goes the Wigglytuff. And Mariadon's looking pretty right there. So Wigglytuff goes down. It's not the end of the world, though. It's only Wigglytuff. They are life up. Valuable information. That's good to know. Um, now we can go Cinderace. Uh, Cinderace. I'm going to go to Tea Time the Sinister. I think Sinister can handle this. So let's go for it. Let's go for a Strength Sap first and foremost. Just to lower their attack, which doesn't matter. But to get our HP back after a Draco Meteor, potentially. They go for a Volt Switch, which is going to sting just a little bit, um, which is fine. They lose some HP from the Life Orb. And whatever they bring in, we're going to get some health back from. So I'm hoping to see a Karayad on here so we can get the Strength Zap on that. That'd be ideal. But we're probably going to see a Zapdos, to be honest with you. So they're going to go into that, which is the Zapdos. Yeah, Zapdos comes in. Uh, we go for a Strength Zap, which is, of course, going to recover some of our HP, but not all of it uh, by any means. It does lower their attack, which is fine. And it does restore... Mm, Oh, it restores all our HP, which is great. Uh, now, you know what? I, I think having Sticky Webs on their side of the field is going to be more beneficial. So I am going to sack off Galvantula here um, to get something else in. So let's see how this goes. So what we'll do is we'll go into you. Go into Widow, Galvantula. And we'll let it go down. They actually go for a Thunder Wave, which is great for us. However, the best move I have to hit this thing is Volt Switch. Now, we are in Electric Terrain. It will do a lot of damage. Let's go for a Volt Switch here. Let's go for Volt Switch here. It does over half with a critical hit as well. That's great. So, Galvantula coming through. Um, We can use Galvantula to sack later. If we assume they're going to go for a Volt Switch to themselves, we should go into Sinister. I doubt they would go for a Hurricane on a 1 HP Galvantula when they have an Electric Terrain up. So, we'll go Sinister. They do go for a Hurricane. They did go for a Hurricane. What the heck? That's mad. Absolutely mad. Um, let's tear a poison here. Now. Let's tear a poison here and go for a calm mind. That way we're going to be neutral to the hurricane. But also they might miss the hurricane. And also also we'll get a calm mind up. Which will help us take the next hurricane after that. So Terra poison is going to come through for us real quick. There we go. This doesn't make us susceptible to anything either on their team. They don't have ground coverage on that team. Um, so they do go for a hurricane. They miss again, which is unfortunate for them. But you know what? Screw it. I'm taking those. So we go for a Calm Mind, which is, of course, going to raise our special attack and special defense, which is going to be very beneficial against the rest of their team. So um, we can go for another Calm Mind after this. The electricity has disappeared from the field, um, which is great. We go for another Calm Mind. That's going to be very annoying for them. They go for a hurricane. And that's going to bounce off us, right? Yeah, it bounces right off us. But it does confuse us, which is really unfortunate. Now, is the hacks going to come back and bite me in the backside real quick? Because I've had a bit of hacks on my favor this game. We don't. We get the Calm Mind off, which is fantastic. So Calm Mind comes through on the Sinister. There we go. Special Attack and Special Defense is going to be boosted. And we get some Leftovers Recovery, which is fantastic. So now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and go for a Strength Sap. Just get my health back. They go for a Thunder Wave, though. So they're going to be paralyzing us as well as being confused. Which is unfortunate, but we weren't outspeeding anything anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And um, we snap out of confusion, but no, never mind, no but. We go for the strength sap, which is fantastic. Snapping out of confusion there is going to be really clutch, and um, because we're going to get some health back, which is fantastic. Back to full HP. We go for a shadow ball here all the time. They go for another hurricane. That's going to stink a little bit if they get a crit, especially. No crits. We go for a shadow ball. That should take out the Zapdos from there. It does take out the Zapdos. So we've got two KOs on them, which is fantastic. Let's see if Sinister can pull this back. All right, Mariadon comes back into the fray. Ready to drop those Electro Drifts. Now, Sticky Webs are going to come into play here. 
But you know what? It's fine. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball once again. Um, just because... Why not? Let's go for a Shadow Ball. Electro Jiff won't take us out, I don't think. They do Terror, though. If they Terror Electric here, this is going to definitely take out Sinister. Even with two Calm Minds, I don't think we can take it. They do Terror Electric, so unfortunately, Sinister is probably going to go down. Unless I'm underestimating Sinister's bulk, but I don't think I am, because it is a Maridon at the end of the day in Electric Terrain with Terror Electric. So, they go for that Electro Drift. Boom. Boom. Blast. Dead. Yeah, we, do, we, do, we were not taking that. Maridon's just too strong. So, Maridon takes us out. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, so, they're going to get some Life Orb damage. Which is great. So, what I'm thinking here is... We can go Gavantula and Bug Buzz. Because they have got the Sticky Web. So, we should outspeed. And then we go Cinderace and finish them off with a Pyro Ball. I can't foresee a, a Galvantula doing anything more than that. So, let's go for a Bug Buzz. We do outspeed, of course, thanks to the Sticky Webs. And that does a nice chunk of damage to the Maridon, which is great. They go for a Dragon Pulse, which is going to take out Galvantula. Um, and now we can just go safely into Cinderace and go for a Pyro Ball and take them out. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Uh, they do lose some HP thanks to the Life Orb. Now, we could go into Malamar here and Super Power. That's a thought. Let's go Malamar and Super Power instead. We do outspeed because of the Choice Scarf, of course. And also the fact they have Sticky Webs. Um, but let's go for a super power real quick. And we might actually be able to just spam super, super power to victory here. Because they're, two of their remaining Pokemon are physical attackers. Now, we are obviously a Malamar. Um, but we should be able to pull something off here. So, Mariadon goes down to the Malamar, which is fantastic. Never thought I'd see the day. Never thought I'd see the day. Alright, in comes whatever that is, the Gourmet, which is the Karyodon. So, Karyodon comes in. It gets caught in the sticky webs, which is fantastic for us. Now, I would stay in and go for a switcheroo or something, but I can't. I would switch out, but I can't. So I'm going to have to go for a superpower again because I have no way to deal with this otherwise. So superpower comes through. It nearly does half. We get an attack and defense boost. If, they, if we live this next attack, we take them out with superpower. They go for the collision course. Will it take us out, though? It does take us out because we are a Malamar at the end of the day. So uh, with that... With that realization in effect there um we go into cinderace here cinderace is definitely our best option here but i think we lose to kyoga big time um so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to u-turn i'm going to just u-turn real quick and get out of there get a bit of chip damage off on them like so I'm going to corvanite because i'm baiting them to go for a collision course here go into corvanite like so get the rocky helmet chip maybe even twice Depending on the move they go for. If they go for a Flare Blitz here, predicting the Corviknight Switch, then they get some re mad recoil. Um, they go for a Drain Punch, which is going to do a decent chunk of damage to us. Recovering their HP as well. But the Rocky Helmet is going to come into effect, which is nice. Now, the Electricity does disappear from the field here. We go for a Brave Bird here all the time. We should live another Drain Punch, but they probably go for a Flare Blitz. Now, they actually do go for a Drain Punch, which we live barely. Barely, 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 barely. They get some HP back, but they do get the Rocky Helmet. And now we go for a nice and powerful Brave Bird, which should take them out. It does take out the Karyodon, which is fantastic. So we're looking all right, to be fair. Um, I'm hoping they bring Zashian in so we can make this a bit closer. But we made it quite close against the Nubis team, which is great for this team. So Zashian and Kyogre are what's left. Let's go for the Cinderace. Let's see if Cinderace can do anything. They do go Zashian. And we've got one more turn of Sun, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we do. So let's go into Striker. They get caught in the sticky webs, of course. But they are going to get that um, Intrepid Sword. There we go. Boosting their attack. Now, I'm going to go straight for a Pyro Ball here. We should be able to take out the Zashian with this in the Sun. As down it goes. So Zashian goes down, which is fantastic. Absolutely amazing for us. And now they go into Kyogre? Probably. So Kyogre's going to come in now. Nice and shiny. Gotta love it. They get caught in the sticky web, so we know we outspeed here. They get the Drizzle up, which is unfortunate. What's more powerful? Are oh, they both the same? Do we go for a Sucker Punch or a U turn? Um. I say Sucker Punch just because why not? It's going to change it into a Dark-type for a start. If they are choice and they lock themselves into Water Sprout, 
getting damage on it is going to be really helpful. So they go for an Origin Pulse instead, which is going to take out Cinderace, unfortunately. Even being a neutral neutral hit is category at the end of the day. And that's going to be game. So we couldn't overcome that Uber's team, but we did pretty darn good. They have one remaining Pokemon being Kyogre. So I think that was a successful game. And that's the lot. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Feel free to try the team out using the rental code on screen right now. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next battle.